Good afternoon. I'm going to have a lecture on numerals and number bases for the students who are doing computer mathematics or computational mathematics. So now in this lesson, we shall discuss different number bases, specifically those that are used by the computer. These include decimal numbers, the base 10 numbers, the binary numbers, the base two numbers, the octal numbers, the base eight numbers, and also the hexadecimal numbers, which are the 16 numbers. So then, let us begin with the decimal numbers. Decimal numbers are numbers used by humans to quantify items. It is called base 10 because symbols that are used are from zero all the way up to nine. It's less than 10 from zero to nine. So to count in base 10, you go from zero to nine. Then do the combinations of two digits starting with 10 all the way to 99. This is how you handle the base 10, the so-called human numbers. So after 99 comes three digits, combinations from 100 to 99. This combination system is true for any base you use. The only difference is how many digits you have before you go to the next combination. Have place values of powers of 10, e.g. 246. Then that 10 you're seeing below is a base, which means 246 is base 10. What are the press values? Two press value is 10 to the power two, as you can see here, 10 to the power two. Then four, the press value is 10 to the power one. Then six, the press value is 10 to the power zero. Another example that you can use, example two is 46.57 base 10. With this one, we have to be very, very careful. It is not a mere integer number, it is a fractional number, okay, which is called the decimal number, where there's integral part and the fractional. So the integral part, you handle them just like the previous example. The press value starts from zero going up. For example, six here, yeah, six, the press value is zero, and then four, the press value is one. So you, you basically put zero and one on the integral part. But on the fractional part here, 0.57, the press value starts from negative one going up. So five will be negative one and seven will be negative two, as you can see from these press values. So therefore, the binary numbers, these ones, which are numbers that are understood by the computer, uses the symbol one and zero. Remember, a number is just a symbol for counting and calculation. So the symbol that is used for binary, okay, the symbols are only zero and one, and one. So to count in the base two, you count zero and one. Then switch to two digits, the combinations of one zero and one. Then to the three digits combinations, 100, 101, 110, and 11. Then four digits, that is 100 all the way up to 111. That's how the combinations of ones and zeros are used in the computer. So what are the place values of the powers? For instance, example one, 11 base two. Just like the previous example, this number is an integer, so expect to start with the place value of zero, one, and two. Remember, this time we're using two. Previously we used ten y because we are in base two. That's why there's two here. Okay. Now this example is a decimal number. Just like that previous a decimal number in the ten. So it has also the integral part and the fraction part. 
So the place values for the integral part starts from zero. As you can see this one, zero and one. For the fractional part, the press value starts from negative one going down. Once you understand this principle, then everything becomes easy for you when it comes to number systems of the projector. What about octos? Octos, numbers used by the machine language, programmers as short and for binary numbers. Interesting. So three binary digits are equivalent to octo digit. It is very true because the ones are a lot. So remembering them and using these ones and zeros, life becomes different. So the octos uses one symbol to represent three binary digits. For example, six is equivalent to one, one, zero. So symbols used are zero up to seven. Those are octo digits representing three binary digits. Hence, okay, if you look at the octo numbers here, here is the base eight counting symbols. Okay, so from zero all the way up to 77, right? So as you can see, there's no 80. We're excluding it from zero to seven, no eight, okay? So eight is not appearing in any of these, okay? Computation we are seeing. So eight is not included. Any number apart from eight means the potential is 80 digit, okay? So now, what are the press values? The press values, Okay, for base eight, we use eight here yeah, as the base because we're in base eight. And then since this number is the O integer, you start from zero, one, two, just like all other integer numbers. But remember, the base is eight. If you're in base eight, you use eight. If you're in base two, we're using two. If you're in base 10, we're using 10. That's the secret, okay? The same can be said about octal numbers where this is integral, this is fractional. So for the integral part, you start from zero going up, maintain the base eight. Then the fractional start from negative going up, we maintain the base. All right. Now, what about the hexadecimal numbers, the base 16? So now these are numbers used by machine and assembly language programmers to help simply low level programming. So four digits, okay, are equivalent to one octo, rather hexa digit, right? So one hexa digit is equal to four binary, okay, digits, right? So the symbol that I used is zero to nine, right? Of course, after nine, there's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. But we don't use the actual numbers after nine. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 are depressed by letters A, B, C, D, and F respectively, right? Which means you have this sequence of numbers from zero to nine and A, B, C, D, and F, right? Then if you're going to go to two digit combinations, it is one zero, one one, one two, one nine, okay? One A, one B, just like that until you put F, 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 F. Okay, what are the press values? The press value is 16. Since we're in the 16, you put the best 16. And since this number is the integral part, so you start from zero going up. For a fractional, just like the previous example, for the fractional part is negative one going up. Then for integral part is zero going up. Right. Now let's look at the conversions. Conversions. So to convert from base 10 to another base, such as base 2, base 8, base 16, is an important skill for a computer scientist and a programmer. So the next session shows how this is done. Let's take the value 27 and convert it to base two. How do you do it? Here's the process. Divide 27 by two. 
the answer is 32, remainder. Divide 13 by two, the answer is six, remainder. Continue until the answer is one. So six divided by two is three, remainder zero. Six divided by two is one, remainder one. So now take the last number and all the remainder in reverse order and put them together. So find that 10 base 10, I mean 27 base 10, the answer will be 11011 base 2. You read from bottom going up. As simple as that, not Okay, let's do it mathematically. So here's an easy way to do it in paper. So 2 into 27 is 13, remainder 1. 2 into 13 is 6, remainder 1. 2 into 6 is 3, remainder 0. 2 into 3 is 1, remainder 1. So then stop and write the answer. So starting from this one here, so we're going to write 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. That's the answer you have. So 27 base 2, it's 11011. Simple, not so. Now, what about going back from base 2 to base 10? For instance, convert 11011 to base, okay, to base 10. How do you that? Remember the place values that you are discussing. So you write this number in this manner, and then on each number put a press value. Since we're in base 2, so you put 2, 2, 2. Two, two, and start from zero, one, two, three, three. Because this number has no fraction part. So it starts from zero going up. And what I'm going to be doing, you say two to the power, six, to the power four, which is 16 times this digit. Okay, do the same, two to the power three is h times one. Again, two to the power two is four times zero. 2 to the power 1 is 2 times 1. Then 2 to the power 0, if you remember your mathematics, it is 1 times 1. Then what do you do? Then you add these numbers, as well. 16 plus 8 plus 0 plus 2 plus 1, you eventually get what? It's as simple as that. People, there's nothing difficult. Coming to a fractional part, okay, a decimal number with a fractional. Party. How do you handle it? Don't do it. Divide and conquer. First of all, sort out this integral part alone. Then you go to a fractional part alone, just like this. For the integral part, you know the best the, the best values are these starting from zero going up. But for the fractional part, remember, start from negative one going up. So for this one, it's as good as the previous example. Do the needful, two to the power three is eight, two to the power two is four, two to the power one is two, two to the power zero is one. Add these, right? Then here, to get rid of a negative, you divide this number into one. So it becomes two into one, right? So it's mathematically zero, need a really wasting time. Then this one, two to the power three into one is one over eight. Add this, it will give you 15. Add this, it will give you 0 0.625. So put this, okay? This answer here, the answer for this one here, and the answer for the integral part, put them together to have a complete answer, which is 15.625, okay? That is done. Now let's move on to 10 to base 8. How do you convert base 10 to base 8? Let us again take the value 27 and convert it to base 8. Same process. Divide 8 okay, into 7. Since you are in base 8, you will be dividing 8 into what? 27 as opposed to 2, right? So 8 into 27 is 3, you remainder 3. Then stop. You can't divide anymore because answer is less than eight. Okay, so the last answer was three. Then the only remainder was three. So the base eight is three, three, base eight. 
I want to see it again? Right. So to do it, we divide eight into 10, seven is three. Three into, okay, three there is 40. It can't, eight can't go there. All right. 